Do you have a piece of artwork that just won't fit on the product that you want to print it on? Maybe that product is too wide or maybe that product is too tall. I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten and in this video I'll show you how you can make your finished artwork taller or wider. So this is a digital watercolor painting that I created a few years ago of a monarch butterfly and I would like to use it to put it on a wide format print on a purse that I'm going to make as a present for my mom for her birthday. So how do I take this square image and make it fit a wider format? Obviously I could crop it down to make it wider, but then I would lose a lot of the picture and a lot of the important stuff is kind of vertical anyways. So I don't want to do that. I also don't want to just stretch the whole thing because then it'll distort it and it won't look good. It might even make it more blurry if I do that. So this is not a sponsored video, that's why I'm not showing what this website is, but it's basically a website that prints photos or artwork on top of bags. So rather than this goofy looking dog here, this would be my monarch butterfly. Now I have the dimensions here, 13.5 inches wide by 10 inches tall by 4.75 inches deep. So I know that I need it to fit 13.5 by 10. I can then go into Photoshop and I can make my canvas 13.5 inches by 10 inches tall. And I'll use 300 for the resolution just because that's a standard print resolution. Now depending on the printer, you might want to choose RGB color or CMYK color. In this case, they're just going to have us upload a JPEG, which is going to get converted to RGB anyways. So we'll just leave it as RGB. We'll click on create to create that canvas. And now this canvas is the exact size of the print area on the purse. So if I take my completed artwork and I drag it in, it fits on the canvas, but there's a little bit of negative space on the left and the right. So as I mentioned earlier, we could stretch it, but that distorts the image, and we could crop it, but then we lose some of the image. So what else can we do besides that to be able to make this image wider? If your artwork is something like a pattern or something like a landscape without any faces or circles or any objects that would be noticeably distorted by stretching the canvas, it's probably fine to stretch it out. You could try it and see how it looks. And if it looks good, then go for it. Also, if your artwork has the main subject separate from the background, you may be able to just stretch or scale the background to fill the extra space. So what I mean by that is if I had put these flowers and this butterfly here on a separate layer and that layer was still independent of the background, I could just make the background wider. But this is just one flattened layer, so I can't do that. But let's take a look at what we can do. We can hold down Alt and Shift and we can drag a duplicate and we can make sure that it snaps and lines up right to the edge there. So what we have is a duplicate side by side next to our original. That duplicate is on its own separate layer. We'll take that duplicate and we'll go to Edit, Transform, and then we'll flip it horizontally. Now you can see that it kind of mirrors along the edge there. There's an obvious seam, but we'll take a look at how to clean that up later. This is definitely an improvement. We can hold Alt and Shift, and we can drag that duplicate to create another duplicate. And once it's been duplicated, you can let go of Alt, just keep holding Shift so it doesn't move up or down. And we'll snap that to this edge here. Again, we have that nice mirroring effect. Now if the image that you want to print is much smaller than the space you're printing it on, you may have some extra space on the top and bottom as well. And you could just repeat that same process. The overall goal here is to use the image itself to go ahead and fill that extra space. I'll also mention that if your image is much smaller than the canvas that you're printing it on, and you try to enlarge it by scaling it larger to fill the space, it's likely that your image is going to get blurry. However, if your image is much larger than the print size, you don't have to worry about it getting blurry because you can scale it down without an issue. So depending on your image, you might be happy with this mirrored effect, but let's take a look at how to take it to the next level and make it a little more asymmetrical so you don't see those mirrored repeating patterns. First thing I'll do is go ahead and zoom in to this little boundary here. And if you look very close, you can see a one pixel gap so even though it snapped to that edge, it didn't quite go right to the edge. So I'm going to select that layer. And I'm just going to nudge it left with the arrow key. That way we get rid of that gap. And I will pan over to the other side as well. And we'll get rid of that gap by nudging it to the right. Now there's no line there. And then I will hold shift on my keyboard, select all three of these layers. And I will merge them with control E into a single layer. Now all three of those layers have been fused into a single image. And here's where we can get creative with Photoshop. We can use the spot healing tool, which is a little band-aid here. I'm going to hit the right bracket to make my brush larger. And if I paint with this brush over the area that I want to get rid of, it will begin to disappear. Now this is a particularly tricky area that does not want to go away. 
So we'll have to come back to this in a minute. However, it will work really well on these little seams over here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the right bracket key to make my brush a bit larger. And I'll just paint over some of those areas that are repeating. If I need to paint over it several times, I can do that. And you can see it breaks it up and it makes it more asymmetrical. So anywhere where you see a pattern, just go ahead and paint over that area. And that'll help to make it less noticeable. We can go over to the other side and we can clean up this seam here. We can get rid of this flower here if we want to. Now this is using the content aware fill mode. So it's automatically replacing what you paint over with something from the background that kind of matches more or less. This is another area we'll have to come back to. We can just paint over some areas here just to change them up. For something like this, content aware is working really well because it's kind of impressionistic looking. If your painting had more fine details, then this might not do the trick, but it's worth trying. So something like that looks kind of nice. There's other tools we can use, such as the patch tool, which is hiding underneath the spot healing brush. We can use the patch tool to draw a selection around an area. Then we simply drag the patch over to an area that kind of closely matches that color and then just let go and it will patch it. But you may notice that no matter how hard you try, you can't get rid of stuff that's right near the edge here. Now, why is that? Well, if we hit Control T on our keyboard, we'll actually see that when we fuse those images together, that extra space did not get cropped off. And so the space that you can't see on the left and right are being taken into consideration when Content Aware tries to match that pattern. So as far as it's concerned, you're trying to keep this part of the wing here because the rest of the butterfly is over here on the right. You just can't see it. So what I need to do is I need to do Select All, which is Control A on my keyboard. Then I need to create a mask. Then I'll right click on that mask and I'll apply it. I could also just crop down my canvas if I want to. Now if I hit Control T, you'll see that the boundary of my image only goes to the edge of the canvas. Now if I go back to that spot healing brush and I paint over here, chances are that extra part of the wing is going to go away. And this little bit will go away over here and over here as well. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the patch tool. There's a big area up here that I want to replace, so I'll just select that, drag my patch down here, and that patches it up quite a bit and smooths it out. Control D to deselect. I'll use my patch tool for this little area here. And again, just kind of replace it with something else that helps blend it in. Still kind of see a seam there, so I'll go ahead and patch that a bit and see how it's helping to smooth it out. The background that I'm adding is matching the background in the piece, so it looks as if I started with a large canvas to begin with. There's other tools we can use, such as the clone stamp. You can hold Alt on your keyboard, and you can sample a particular area. Then when you paint, your cursor is going to follow that area that you sampled. So I'll make my brush bigger here. And you can see that I'm taking pixels from one area and bringing them into another. So if I make my brush really big, and I sample up here by holding Alt and clicking, and I paint down here, then I'm adding more flowers. So that may also be a way to kind of extend your edges and create more content in your painting. But I think it looks okay like this. So then all we need to do now is go to File, Save As. We want to make sure we save a copy. We don't save over our original. We can call it Monarch Wider, and we can save it in the file format that our printer wants us to save it in. And in my case, they want me to save it as a JPEG, so I'll do that. And then now you can see I have my original and I have my wider version with the extended background. So there you go. Those are some techniques for making your finished artwork taller or wider. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more videos for digital artists like you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.